I grew up watching the Flames in the 80s. And after watching Game 3 on Sunday between the Calgary Flames and the Edmonton Oilers, I got really frustrated. Some tweet converse, a couple of tweets conversations last night, and there were a lot of people who were like, look, this is it was 2-1 against Dallas, but this is not the same. They don't have – Dallas didn't have – McDavid or Dreisaitl. They had Ottinger who was unreal and McDavid is is unreal. And I think that's the first place you, you got to start here. I, I mean, like, I mean, you have to acknowledge that Connor McDavid is playing at a pace that we have just never seen him specifically play at. He's taking his game to another level and that should absolutely be commended. Um, I, Leon Dreisaitl, I think deserves a hell of a lot of praise and just for the way he's playing on one leg, he's playing literally on one leg. He's doing this on one leg. Um, yeah, the first line I deserves all the credit. Um, you know, Zach Hyman has has been I I think the a, a guy completely overlooked by a lot of people right now is that with the play of Zach Hyman I think has been a huge difference as well. So you know there are some things from the Oilers' perspective to give credit for. <sighs> And this is, okay, so this is, you know, I, I grew up in the 80s, watched this team. I had to literally blank this out, but, you know, I and, and sorry for the long diatribe here, but I remember the Flames and the Oilers back in the early 80s. It was 11-3, it was 12-4, 9-1. The Flames were getting beat physically, mentally, and literally uh, on the scoreboard in the fist fights. Every area which way the Oilers were just killing the Flames. Until 1986 comes around, Flames make a couple of trades. They get the Joe Mullen trade. They get the John Tonelli, Dick Fatio, all of that. They turn the series around, but um, it's turning around. They win that series. But then 88 happens. The Flames are the favorites. It's the Flames are the President's Trophy winners. We'll touch on that in a moment here. Uh, the Oilers sweep them. And then, like, in... Like not just like it was like like tonight watching Tampa and Florida, but it was the Oilers killed the Flames, like just bl blurted the Flames. The Oilers trade Wayne Gretzky, Flames win the Cup in '89. 1991 comes around, they can't beat the Oilers again, um, and they had a huge lead by the way in Game Seven. They had a three goal lead in Game Seven, and they blew the lead. Essatikin and scores in overtime. So I've I've seen all this. I. So I, this is part of me that is just this, the child in me is watching this with a lot of frustration because I am seeing some themes again. Yes, look at the parallels here. The Oilers had Wayne Gretzky, the best player on the planet. The Oilers have now Connor McDavid, the best player on the planet. Sort of a similar, you can see the similarities there in terms of, of 99-97. But correct me if I'm wrong, Sean. Do we not, on the Calgary Flames, have a Selkie Trophy Center nominated center, and two players? One of them was in the top, was in the discussion to be in the Hart Trophy conversation. I put my hand up and put him in there, by the way. And another player on this line that got a hundred points this year and is asking for eight million dollars or more, and was considered the best line in the National Hockey League. Do we not, is, are they, is that not there in Calgary or did that just, did they uh, decide to take a vacation and we just forget about that? Well, I think you could argue that after game one, they've taken a vacation. They have been fucking horrible, especially Matthew Kachuk, especially Elias Lindholm. They have both been absolutely fucking terrible. Matthew Kachuk has been the laziest player in this entire series. There was a play in the third period. Puck is going down. I think it was Kulak going down. Here's Kachuk with one hand on his stick trying to fly by to get one hand the, the stick behind him to carry the puck. It's just fucking lazy hockey. Lazy, stupid, shitty hockey from a guy that wants $8 million a year. I am so tired of the selfish act of Matthew Kachuk. He comes when it's convenient, but when it's clutch time, this guy has done fuck all in the playoffs. I could give a shit about his hat trick in, in game one. I really could. One of them was in an empty net. The way that was just that was a weird game when it actually has mattered. Matthew Kachuk has done fuck all, and there's a legitimate argument that if I was not having this behind, 
and this in front, and he wasn't picked ahead of Ole Olevi, we would be having conversations about Matthew Kachuk being in one of the most overrated players in the National Hockey League. Sorry, I am right now not entirely convinced he's worth the $8 million. This has been a shit show from him, and this has not just been game two, game three. This has been an entire 10-game playoff series, and this has been a playoff career. And I don't know what's wrong with Elias Lindholm, but he has virtually disappeared. He is nowhere near as been a, as effective in this playoff as he was during the regular season. It's just, to me, everyone has taken the shots. The defense has not been good, and I totally agree with that. But the forward group as a whole, and specifically center ice position, this is, and in that first line, has been fucking dreadful. I'm that that is what has been bothering me the most is because through the history of this, Oilers top players show up. Flames top players look it up. Theron Fleury, as much as that classic slide down the ice, Sean, that's everyone is watching that slide down the ice. Wow, what a goal by Theron Fleury. That was his first goal in that series. The Flames number one players have never ever shown up at a series of the Battle of Alberta. Never. And it's time for these fucking first liners to show the fuck up. A reminder, we recap Calgary Flames games the day after the playoff games. You can follow us on Twitter at Shifts and Pucks, Facebook.com Shifts and Pucks, YouTube.com Shifts and Pucks, Twitch.com Shifts and Pucks. Subscribe wherever you get your audio, as well as on the Area 51 Sports Network.